Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful, late, late summer day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. A little bit too windy for me to be recording this outside. Uh, here. It is now Monday morning, September 20th, 2021. As the last days of summer 2021 wind down and uh, <clears throat> I was going to do a rant today and maybe I will tomorrow about uh, all of the dot connecting uh, between fertilizer, between natural gas, fertilizer, CO2, slaughterhouses, and uh, building food shortages, mainly over there in England, but uh, I need to try to figure out these dots a little bit more. So uh, I want to thank the little lefty Caitlin Johnstone for saving me from actually having to do some uh, work uh, making a semi-intelligent video. So. Uh, we hear from Caitlin fairly regularly. I don't. Uh, I don't know if if Caitlin is Australian herself, or if she's an American living over there in Australia. But uh, Caitlin is one of these hardcore lefties. You know, she's kind of like that fellow uh, Chris Wright I read from yesterday. Uh, a hardcore lefty instead of one of those little uh, soft lefties. But anyway, uh, her morning rant today calls up three different things. First, we're, we're going to start uh, just, just with the opening of her rant because I like it. And then we're going to uh, get back to some China bashing. And then from that, we're going to go just to some more uh, general stuff about about hypocrisy and all that. Anyway, let's just start off straight ahead. So what is Caitlin Johnstone talking about this morning? <clears throat> talking about Armageddon. All right, my favorite subject. Lefties talking about Armageddon. Take it away, Caitlin. <clears throat> the fact that our world is turtling toward man-made obliteration on multiple fronts should probably occupy more of our conversational bandwidth than it does. My basic overall position is that humanity is about to end itself via climate chaos or nuclear war due to global capitalism and oligarchic imperialism and that that propaganda prevents people from rising up to stop this and our only path out is a mass scale psychological transformation if you've ever been curious why i don't write more about this subject it's usually because the above is my area of focus and and I and I honestly don't know if this is a typo if you have ever been curious why I don't write more about this or that subject it's usually because the above is my area of focus I I, I think she meant to say is not my area of focus and then she says everything I write points to this, you know, to this conclusion in some way. That's what I do here. So uh, anyway, then she goes, you know, th this is uh, kind of like that rant I was reading yesterday. What, what Caitlin does is, uh, you know, just go through little snippets, notes from the matrix, she calls it. And so then, uh, after talking about the obliteration of uh, humanity off the face of this planet, I enjoy the irony 
where she basically defends China and uh, you know does her usual uh, well-deserved rant against Western, namely U.S. Uh, Western imperialism. This goes off in, into her Western, particularly U.S. imperialism rant, uh, talking about her analysis of what is going on in China. Um, I did uh, get a sick laugh uh, from this article. If you probably talking to people in the U.S., if you are more concerned about China's domestic affairs than your own country's aggressive foreign policy toward China, it is because you have been propagandized. Change your media consumption habits accordingly. Well, Caitlin, I guess I'm going to have to stop reading that all propaganda, China bashing propaganda mill called Mongabay.com, who is, uh, you know, at least over the last 12 years, I have been following Mongabay and the ecologist, biologist, conservationist, climate scientist that I have been following in Mongabay and other environmental publications, you know, all of the people that I personally have interviewed uh, talking about China, particularly the infamous Belt and Road Initiative uh, being uh, one of the biggest threats, if not the single biggest threat against life on this planet. You know, is Rhett Butler, that damn propagandist, uh, Rhett Butler, uh, that I just need to stop listening to any propaganda uh, about about China. So, anyway, I, you know, it's just, I, I don't even know if, uh, if uh, Caitlin Johnstone has ever heard the term Belt and Road Initiative, or if she did hear it, would, 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 would her eyes, like everyone else's, roll back in her head? And so, for anybody who does not understand this, okay, uh, with my China bashing, you, you know, uh, I, 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 I'm going to get back to this in a minute, an American talking about uh, the environmental impacts of China. We're going to get back to this in a minute, but <clears throat> I want you to understand that my China bashing is on one level. It's keep it simple, stupid. And that is the growing environmental, uh, ecological, carbon, all of that uh, the growing footprint of China. That's all I give a damn about. I, I admit it. I don't know. My guess is, and I'm not going to sit here and read this long thing about her analysis of, of, of what's going on in China. My guess is that she's absolutely correct. Well, she's half correct. She's putting 100% of the blame on the uh, Cold War, uh, you know, ramping up between the U.S. and China, that it is 100 percent the U.S.'s fault. Uh, I don't know. She could be right. Uh, I admit I, I don't know enough about the subject uh, to comment intelligently. My guess is she's probably a lot closer to the truth than you're going to find anywhere else. But I don't believe for one second that, that uh, China is, is just completely innocent of, uh, uh, of the Cold War uh, going on between um, the U.S. And, and China is all of this rhetoric and, and saber rattling and chest beating on both sides. You know, whenever I read all of this stuff, Everybody is guilty. The, the truth is always in the middle. If one thing I learned in five years of journalism training 
and uh, seven years as a journalist is you will find that the truth is usually somewhere in the middle. So you take your most strident voices from both ends of the spectrum, from the left, from the right, from the US, China, whatever, the truth is going to be somewhere in the middle and the more you get out of the middle, the further you get away from the truth. Okay, so uh, they're, they're all guilty. All right, uh, they're humans. I, I don't pay any attention to this crap, but I do. So I guess her bottom line is, is however you analyze what is building up in China. Of course, she never mentions after that opening uh, about, uh, about the ecological footprint. Uh, what she's talking about is not so much the uh, ecological and climate change end of the spectrum. She's looking at the nuclear war possibility. And this is the bottom line, which I and anyone else with a brain, whether you, whether you blame it 100% on the U.S. and say that China is completely innocent, just totally innocent, this poor little Chinese getting bullied by the old uh, American uh, imperialist, whether you uh, believe that <coughs> or you <coughs> believe 180 degree opposite, or like me, you agree that it's probably everybody's fault. This is the bottom line uh, that that you uh, that makes no difference uh, to to arrive. Uh, the the ends justifies the means. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> it is entirely possible for any of the planned escalations in proxy conflicts geared toward undermining nuclear armed China to provoke a response which causes a chain reaction from which there is no return. A simple miscommunication, misfire, or weapons malfunction could do it. In a steadily intensifying great <coughs> great power competition that imperialists are saying will likely consume the entire 21st century, that is a lot of chances for something to go catastrophically wrong. <coughs> we repeatedly came close to this happening in the last Cold War, you know, the one, the, the one with Russia. So, uh, you, you know, what she's saying here is that we don't even need a hot war uh, with China, that uh, this is not an original thought, that just something clearly out of the blue, so as she says, some mistake, some miscommunication, particularly <clears throat> as AI becomes more and more and more uh, responsible for making these split second to de decisions to kick off Armageddon. The more we get uh, humans out of it, you know, my guess is if, if AI had been running the show instead of humans back in the Bay of Pigs, uh, I might have been, I might have gone up in a mushroom cloud when I was three years old. Uh, but I, I am 100% with Caitlin uh, I, on, on that bottom line. What, what, what this means for humanity and the planet while all of, uh, you know, with all of this saber rattling and chest beating is that uh, this planet could go up in a mushroom cloud long before climate change uh, takes us out of here. So I think Book Hermit would give Caitlin uh, a score on that. But anyway, that out of the way, I, I've been 
<clears throat> this, the rest of this rant's just been kind of rolling around in my head. Uh, and, and whether it's China bashing, Russia bashing, uh, wh whatever the bashing going on, okay, uh, th this whole, and, and, I, and I still get this all the time, I will probably get it in here, I, you know, the, the claim that an American, an American uh, who is, in my case, an unwilling participant in, in this military uh, imperialist uh, empire, what's left of the American empire, uh, because I am a member of this tribe, this bloodthirsty, warmongering tribe, whether or not I agree with it, I do not have the right to call out any other country because I live in the most evil empire in the history of the planet. Okay? Now, I, I don't know exactly which of the logical fallacies this is violating. Uh, it, it's some, it, it, is it red herring? Uh, it, it, it's a close cousin to gaslighting. Uh, so uh, so let, let's look, look at it this way. <clears throat> okay. I live in the United States. I, I am an American. I live in the United States. I agree 100% with Caitlin Johnstone, who may or may not be an American. I don't know. I agree 100% with her that, that I live in an evil empire, okay? Uh, this, is, this is pretty much one plus one equals two. But this whole argument that because I live in America, I'm not allowed to point out that one plus one equals two because, I don't know, in China, two plus two equals four. All right, one plus one equals two in America. Two plus two equals four in China. So anybody in America is not allowed to call out China for taking down the planet. Okay, let's go over there. All right, let, let's say we got two people. So, uh, you know, everybody that I have ever met personally from China seems like a pretty good guy. So let's say right now, I've got somebody with a brain from China sitting next to me. Okay, so he believes correctly that, Chinese, that China's rising ecological footprint can and will take down the planet. So I got a guy with a brain. He and I are in complete agreement that China's ecological footprint is as big a threat to this planet as the U.S. military. He and I agree on this. All right, does he lose the right to make a statement about China's ecological footprint? Because he is from China. Is he, well, of course, in China he wouldn't be allowed to uh, you know to say that, uh, but I won't even I won't even go there. Uh, th th this th this is absurd. I I, I mean Adolf Hitler. Uh, I'm assuming Adolf Hitler knew that one plus one equals two, and that two plus two equals four. I am quite sure there were a lot of Germans uh, during World War II who were absolutely horrified. Uh, about what was going on uh, with the Nazi party. So were they supposed to sit there and, 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 and keep their mouth shut? I am absolutely horrified uh, about what the, what the U.S. military and what's left of the American empire uh, is doing to this planet. So I guess I can say that because I'm an American.
I can say that, but I can't say that China is doing whatever it can to take down the planet too. That, that, that's as absurd as saying that someone from China can't sit there and, 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 and state the obvious fact that China is a threat to this planet. And of course, guys, you know where this is all ending up to. Uh, humans are a threat to the planet. Anyway, that was a long way of saying humans are a threat to the planet. And be it climate change or nuclear war, it is humans uh, one way or the other that are going to take down this planet. Restaurant dog, are you feeling better? The little dog has had a bad morning. He got a he got a stick, a sharp stick stuck in the roof of his mouth this morning. And Sancho Panza has not been feeling good, but it looks like he's feeling a little bit better. Are you feeling a little bit better and ready to go get some tippies like that? And and don't be yanking roots out of the ground and getting those roots and stuck in the roof of your mouth anymore like that. Anyway, guys, I have to go. Uh, declare war. I have to go do some weed bashing uh, out here on this gorgeous day. While I still can, and I suggest you get out there on the last two days of summer of 2021 and get ready for the fall of 2021. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. Okay, little dog, the ranting is over.